Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to look at the transfer bus. Now this is a 16-bit bus which passes through each of the counter registers but it doesn't go anywhere else. It's predominantly just used for transferring data between the 16-bit registers in a complete 16-bit quantity. Now this is the straightforward way of completing operations like a, a jump which would require replacing the entire 16-bit contents of the program counter in one go. We could do that uh, with a more complicated pipeline that could transfer around the upper and lower halves, but when I was planning this out and looking into it, I realized that having the 16-bit transfer bus was actually going to be the simplest way of achieving that. So it might seem like overkill to have a whole extra bus for this, but an extra bus is actually just a couple of extra latch chips in each of these registers and then there's no reason for that bus to go anywhere else. But we do need to control it and that's what we're going to do today. Okay, I'm just going to pause it right there. Now I do go on and build some of the bus control logic I'm talking about here, but over the course of doing that I come across a few problems and now I'm looking at the videos and I'm experimenting with the board after recording that video. It's clear to me that a few problems have cropped up with the build and so the next video is going to be some troubleshooting where hopefully I'll get to the bottom of those. But I don't like hiding problems so I'm just going to edit the remainder of this video as normal. But keep an eye out for a few bits of odd behaviour because I've spotted a few that I don't during the video now I'm watching. And so it's kind of interesting how much you can uh, overlook these issues yourself when you're focusing on one area. This board is our kind of holding location for all the connections into the address registers that we haven't really done anything with. The two lines we're interested in on each of these registers are the assert to bus and the load line, which is going to be those two. At the moment, these are all just plugged into the 5 volt rail. Okay, so that's obviously the load line. So that is a cert of a transfer bus. So I've just wired in four of them are high and the least significant one is low. So that's the program counter is asserting to the bus. Here I've um, brought them all high apart from this one, which if I bring that low and then let it return high, it will have uh, loaded a copy of the program counter. We appear to be missing one bit here. I'll need to investigate that later, but I think I can uh, put that aside for now. We may have a slightly dodgy connection on the strip board. Okay, so We've got 10 lines, 5 load and 5 assert to bus. Let's think about how we're going to drive them. As before, I'm going to do the bus manipulation with the 74LS138 demultiplexer chips. As before, these demultiplexers produce active low outputs, so I've wired up these LEDs to the 5, five volt rail, so bringing them to ground is what will make them light up. And these each have two active low and one active high enable input. Thank you. 
Okay, so what I'm standardizing on is output zero isn't going to be wired to an LED because that's the, the output I'm going to use when nothing's happening. I appreciate that's not the way the 8-bit uh, bus is working at the moment, but I will change that up at some point. Okay, so I then want to take six of the seven outputs at the top straight across. Now that's actually all we need to worry about for now because we've got five address registers and the transfer register is going to be a address register as well. But we've only got six in total, so that's all we need to wire up. Right, so we should be able to take this one, which is the assert to bus set of lines. Now, I change the least significant bit on the input. Then we get an assert to bus on the program counter. Let's try going to the return address here, so that'll be just the second bit high. That all appears to be working in the way we'd like. So then I'm going to take the load lines, put them into this first set. I'm going to move the decrement lines here across from above the chip to above the LEDs, it's all the same lines, but just gives us a little bit of space to work. Now with the assert to bus like control lines, we want them to go low when we select them and just stay low. But the load one, we want to pulse that with the clock in the same way we did for increment decrement and the load operations on the main bus. So I need to bring the clock line up to that. I do appreciate this is getting very difficult to uh, see what's going on at times. I'm also working very close to the controls to my desk light. I keep brushing them with wires. Oh, of course. Okay, one of the lines that goes into the address registers is the clock line. And the reason why that's there is because we've got four 4-bit four counters which can either increment or decrement. And the outputs from those are latched into these chips, which is two pairs, which are used to assert the values back to buses. And we use that approach so that we've always got a consistent known value and we don't suffer from an issue, issue where we have an, an undetermined value while we're midway through incrementing it. Now, once again, this is one of those properties that we were particularly concerned on for having for the program counter. So we could increment the program counter using its previous value for performing a memory read. Otherwise, the results of the memory we read would be very undefined. But all of the counter address registers are the same. And at the moment, I've only wired the clock into the program counter. I need to get that wired into the other addresses as well. Now doing this is actually making me worry about what's called the fan out limit. Each of the clock lines here is going to four separate chips. But the clock line is coming from this 555 timer chip at the moment, and I've got no idea what its fan out limit is. So I might run into a problem with this. And that's not behaving right anymore. So 
this is an ink SI which should increment here when that gets to the top. So, yeah, so it's added four to it. That's not even remotely right. That worked. And that worked. Why is that one struggling? Okay, as I feared, it looks like we are hitting a limit on just how much load we can put on some of these lines. So let's see if we can resolve that. So what I've got here is a 74LS04, which is six knot gates. It's exactly the same as the one we've got up here. Now what we want broadcast to these five lines, each of which has four loads on it, four chips that the signal goes to, is the clock line. So at the moment, that's actually coming through this wire here. Now putting this into an inverter means that we're getting the opposite signal to the one we want. But it does mean that we've only got one unit load on the clock line and we've got a full complement of uh, fan out limit on the output. We should really and truly be respecting the, the 10 fan out limit. So I can actually only drive a maximum of two of these chips for the clock line from each output. But I've got six inverters on here and I'm using one of them as the initial input. And so if I take the output from there and pass it into three of the others, I can then use those additional lines to, to drive all of these chips. So I'm going to pair these up. And I'm going to take the output from this first inverter and pass it to the input of each of the three along the top. So now we've got three copies of the doubly inverted clock line, which should be the regular clock line, albeit delayed by a very small amount of time, that we can bring down to these. These are all the wires I've been pulling out, the old register boards. I'm hoping this length will match one of these. Okay, let's see if that started to behave itself. Okay, so this is quite odd. First increment is incrementing the program counter by two. As does the second. After a little while, it starts incrementing by one again. Okay, this appears to be working again now. It's the constant load coming. Yeah. Okay, so that is working. So, I don't know if you noticed, but the last thing I did there was I added a few extra decoupling capacitors around here. 
So I suspect what was starting to cause the issue here is we've got just a little bit too much power drain everywhere and just adding a few extra capacitors in has uh, cleaned that up. But I think I may, uh, I may spend a little bit of time in the future looking at power distribution. I did uh, notice an issue a little while ago where LEDs were getting a lot dimmer on one side of the board than the other and I kind of improved that a lot by putting in things like extra doubled up power connections but I suspect I just pushed the problem back a little bit. Anyway, let's go back and look at the transfer bus. So there I've asked the program counter to assert the bus and then I'm going to ask SI to load it and then I'll clock and there we go that's loaded up. So I've got three bits to select what's asserting to the bus and three bits to select what's loading and that will all work. So I'll put those back Let it run for a while. Let's get that one to assert to the bus and try loading it up here. Okay, that's not right either. Okay, so we've built the bus control logic here for handling the control lines to assert to and load from the 16-bit transfer bus. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to go any further than that today because we had to spend the time troubleshooting and working out the fan-out issue here. And I believe we've got a, a power issue I've partially mitigated with these capacitors, but I think I might need to uh, improve my power distribution wiring across the board. But I think that's enough for today. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Goodbye.